Hello, and I think this is episode 22, but I've kind of lost track because I missed some episodes and I haven't gotten used to counting with them missing yet. Uh, so I went ahead and created a very simple object, because what we're going to be doing today is weapons. When we equip a ship with weapons, we want them to be visible from a long range, so that you don't have to zoom in and get a clear perspective. You can just see what's equipped by looking at the ship, and there are two pieces to that. One is the weapon mesh, and the other is the actual weapon particle effects uh, that happen passively. Now the weapon mesh uh, can be almost anything, and in this case I'm going for extremely simplistic. Here we've got what are basically our variant on the phasers, they're a beam weapon. Uh, and what I've gone ahead and done is created a very simple mesh and a material for it. But the material isn't done quite yet, because what we need to do is we need to make this material an unlit material. Um, I wonder if there's an unlit material. Uh, decal? Would that work? No. Because uh, we don't actually need it to be textures, but I guess we'll just... See, the problem with unlit texture is that it demands that we have a... Uh, a texture in order to color it. It won't let us color it without the texture equipped. So, um, let's take a look and see whether or not we can... You know, unlit always does that. Uh, Self-eliminate, that's what I'm looking for. Sorry, I always get the cu couple of them mixed up. And we're going to go ahead and set this to be uh, a bright yellow color. No, no, blue, actually. This kind of blue is, is probably better. Uh, no, because that's the same color as shields, isn't it? So, like this. Yeah, that'll do. Maybe it's just a hint more red. Yeah, kind of an orangish. Alright, and that will allow us to have a color which is visible regardless of where it is. So down here we got a weapon set of, a set of prefabs for our weapons, right? Let's go ahead and drag the dummy weapon up here, and we're going to go ahead and modify it by simply dragging this mesh object into it, renaming it to... Uh, uh, one by one blaster 90 that is the weapon that we're talking about here and uh, uh, just we don't need that anymore we can go ahead and make sure that this is in the right spot and uh, drop the whole thing back uh, did it not rename it oh I renamed the renamed the mesh object within it because I wasn't paying attention brilliant there. Now we can also create a mesh that's not just a, a glowing strip of lights, and we can even have a single mesh that is both glowing and not glowing by using sub-meshes, but for our purposes that's okay, we don't really care. We just need something that really, really indicates what weapon is in play. So let's go ahead and make that a weapon, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the ship creator, and where we have the dummy weapon equipped, we're going to replace that with the 1x1 one one Blaster 90. Um, now, uh, one of the problems with the 1x1 Blaster 90 is that it's not a Blaster 90, it is, in fact, a Blaster 45. There we are. So now when we hit play, you can see that we've got it, and it's actually inverted. So that's easy enough. We'll go and um, rotate it around the y-axis 180 degrees. Just the mesh, not the, uh, not the actual weapon. There we are. So that's better. And you can clearly see the weapon from as far away as you'd like now. Uh, and, of course, we'll be able to see that if we go into our spawn script and actually spawn in, play the game, go over to Nykus, and have ourselves a glance. Shoom. Ah! Get away! Alright, so what we're going to do from here on out is everything we create is going to have a visual signature so that we can see it from this pers particular perspective. In this case, that beam weapon is still kind of awkward looking. So let's go into our weapon prefabs again. And this time we're just going to move the mesh back. I'll go ahead and drag it out so we can see it. We're going to move the mesh back so that it's not floating in front of the ship. Uh, the mesh, there it is. So, like this. And we're going to scale it down just a touch, like that. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and apply that, and then delete it, and then hit play. And we're going to go fly over there and take a look and see whether or not it looks a little bit better. Belia, huh? Belia. 
I think this uh, name creation system is pretty decent. It's kind of got some interesting names to them, and all of them are pronounceable. All right, so that's a little bit better. Maybe it's still a little bit big, but that's okay. We actually are fighting against someone who looks an awful lot like we do. So as I was saying, we're going to create a whole bunch, a, di a diverse uh, array of weapons and ships and so on, but we're always going to follow this basic philosophy that it's got to change how the ship looks in a major way so that you can see the weapons from a distance. Now I went ahead and I showed you how to do that with a beam weapon. With a particle weapon, you're going to have a little bit of a harder time uh, because they inherently take up less, uh, I mean not with a, part, with, a, with a directed weapon, because they inherently take up less space and you want to rotate them. So that's what we're going to do now, is we're actually going to go ahead and uh, create a quick little mesh for a beam cannon, and I'll be right back with that. Alright, so I've created a new one called a beam cannon 30, and it's a very very simple mesh, just like the beam blaster bank. So we're going to go down into weapons again, uh, the prefab section, and drag our 1x1 Blaster 90 out, and we're just going to be modifying it to make it into our 1x1 uh, uh, Beam Cannon 30. Like so. Uh, we're going to need to pull in that Beam Cannon 30 mesh, which is called Cube, because I forgot to name it. That's okay, though. Uh, oh, and it needs to go into the mesh, like this. So there we go. It's the same exact uh, philosophy as to how it's created and how it's uh, uh, how it works, except that in this case, um, it seems oddly squashed. Did we scale somewhere that we didn't mean to? Oh no, it's just backwards. I see. Um, that should be right. Well, we'll find out. So, as a beam cannon, uh, all we do is we hit. Uh, so hit, put this back into the weapons prefab as a new prefab. Don't override our blaster 90, that wouldn't be no good. And then we are going to add that as a possible weapon to our set here in the spawn. Not the spawn, uh, in the garden. So here in the ship creator we've got one weapon, we just add the other weapon, like so. Okay, now we have both. And if we spawn in, we can see that now this particular ship has the beam weapon. But because it's not projecting out in front of the ship, it's hard to, harder to see. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to drag the uh, actual mesh up just a touch uh, so that we can see it a little bit better. Um, for some reason, it's actually way down. I think I might have accidentally moved these on the y-axis. Oh, it's not actually 4. What it is is it's like 4 times e to the negative 9 million. So we're going to go ahead and make this uh, 0.2. Yeah, there we go. And then we're going to save that. And the next thing we need to do is we need to change the weapon script because we need to make it so that the beam weapon will actually point at the, at the place it's firing. Uh, the cannons will actually point. So we're going to have two classes of weapon. No, uh, that's not the way. There we are. We're going to have two classes of weapon. We're going to have uh, public bool targets equals true. And this just um, rotates. How about rotates equals true? And this just will mean that uh, I guess most of, more, ro more of them will rotate than not, but this just means that when the um, it will track when we tell it to fire. So down here in uh, fire weapon, when we uh, do this part here, we're going to go ahead and and move it so that we are facing in that direction. Transform dot look at, and then we're going to go ahead and say end pause. Uh, but we need to make it so that it only happens with cannons. We don't want our non-rotational turrets to to do that. So there we go. And that should be all we need, but we're going to go back into the weapons and make sure that it's true in this one and false in the other. Yep, it's true in our beam cannon and false in that. And now uh, we're going to actually have to go back out because we need to play this. So let's go back out to the spawn and let's go ahead and pilot over there and see whether or not this worked. Oh, I went to something that's a little bit more distant. I wish this had a fast forward option. I guess I could just increase the player's ship speed. 
All right, so that, there it is. You can see how it's actually turning to target us. But when it does so, it actually turns such that the angle of fire capabilities changed. You saw how the, the whole red, the whole red uh, mesh rotated. So what we actually need to do is get the child object that contains the mesh filter and only modify that. Uh, and similarly, we need to modify it back when we're done. So up here, we're going to do protected mesh renderer uh, uh, mesh indicator. Uh, no, uh, weapon body. There it is. We might as well make that a public and just assign it rather than search for it. So down here, what we do is we say weapon body dot transform dot look at. Otherwise, outside of this, uh, we have to make it so that it, it rotates back. So uh, uh, on ceasefire, we have to make sure it rotates back. So grab this again. And here in ceasefire, Oh, except for the weapon body currently is. Well, we'll fix that in a second here. Let me show you what the problem is, and I just remembered this. Um, here in the weapons, you can see that we've got this mesh. It already has a rotation, and that's because the inherent blender model is imported wrong, as you may remember. Uh, or rather, it just has different axes. Uh, so you have to rotate it to get it into the correct axis system for the system. Uh, which means, in turn, that if we actually aim that at something, it's going to aim like 270 and 180 off of what we expect. So we actually need to uh, change these systems so that we've got... these meshes inside of another more neutral object like this one. Yeah, that should be fine. And then we go ahead and assign the weapon body as our weapon body. Oh, it's but it's a mesh filter. So we actually need to just make this a transform. And then down here when we do weapon body dot blah 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 blah. We can just do weapon body dot. We don't need this part. There we go. And now in this one case that's okay, uh we need to go ahead and drag it in. There you go. In this one case, we're going to have to actually delete the weapon body 30 and re-add it because when we changed uh, around the, the, the components inside, we ended up with something else. Uh, and this is no good. We're going to have to... Can't spawn in with a, with a uh, discourse. Now, technically speaking, we don't need to do that with the 1x1 one one Blaster 90 because it does not rotate. So that's, uh, that's okay. Um, we're not going to worry about that. Uh, we'll have to remember, however, to descend from the weapon body 80, a weapon, the uh, the beam cannon 30, rather than the blaster 90 in the future. Oh, uh, we spawned in on top of each other, and ended up bouncing. Because uh, I forgot to make it so that we spawn in a little bit apart from each other. That's okay. Um, let's just go ahead and and uh, live with that for now. So as usual, the episode got a little bit dull at the end there, but I wanted to make it so that we had two kinds of weapons. This kind of weapon, which doesn't rotate, and the other kind of weapon that does. And next episode, we're going to go ahead and start to work with the idea of a tactical assortment of these enemies appearing based on the star's uh, system, uh, based on the, the star's seed, and that should be fun. So I'll see you next episode.